My name is Constance and this is Cruelty Free Musings. Welcome back to my channel. I am here to update you on what I bought during my no buy. Isn't that exciting? Yes. So, the joy of a replacement only no buy is that I do get to replace things and I have replaced some things over the course of my no buy, which for those of you who did not see my introduction video, my three month no buy ran from August 1st to October 31st and I'm recording this on November 1st. My no buy is officially over. I haven't bought anything yet. Nothing that was like forbidden from, from me buying anyway. All right, but the things Okay, so during my no buy, I bought this sunscreen, the pharmacy green screen, daily environmental protector with Echinacea Green Envy. Uh, this I think is a little too heavy for my skin. I was having a lot of breakouts on my chin pretty consistently while I was wearing it, I had to make sure that I was washing my face or putting toner on my face, something like that, to take the oils down before I put this on in the morning. And even then it only worked some of the time. Um, and I used that up. I bought it in September. I think I might have actually bought it during the VIB appreciation sale thing. Maybe. I don't remember for sure, but I bought it in September. And then I used it up in October. And another reason that I decided not to replace it with the same thing was that I was like, well, I would like to not have to buy a sunscreen every month and a half. So I went with this one, which is the Erin Spaces uh, Peptide Daily Mineral Sunscreen for Face by Erin Spaces. And this is one that Hannah Louise Poston talked about. Um, and the reason that I decided on this is it is four ounces. You can't see it. It is teeny, teeny, tiny, but it's right there. If you want to zoom in, you can, but it is four ounces of sunscreen plus, um, I'm actually using less. It's a, it's a thinner, lighter formula and I feel like it spreads better than the pharmacy green clean did. So I use probably not a lot less, probably like three quarters the amount that I used of the of the pharmacy green screen. And um, and that pretty much covers my entire face down onto my neck and usually the back of my neck as well. So I like this sunscreen. It's kind of expensive. It's $58 including shipping. Which, fair enough. Shipping expensive, yo. Um, yeah. I like the sunscreen. It has remarkably improved the appearance of my skin. It's very, it feels very good for my skin. Which is to say that my skin feels and looks fantastic. All of the acne has cleared up. It's gone away. So I'm, given that this is the only thing that I've changed, I'm pretty sure that either the pharmacy sunscreen was a problem or this is great. Or both. Anyway, so, um, the sunscreen is pretty great. Um, and if anything, I feel like maybe I need to 
moisturize twice a day, but this is the only sunscreen that I can put here and here and like basically right up to the corners of my eyes and not get eye burning. So this is basically magic in a bottle. It does not irritate my sensitive eyes. Now my hair is stuck to my lip gloss, great. Magic. In a bottle, disguised as sunscreen. Okay. Uh, the next thing that I replaced was my micellar water. Not chronologically the next thing, but like one of the things that I replaced during this time period. We're not going for chronology here, we're just going for what is closest to me. I'll pick that up. So this is the Pacifica Coconut Water Micellar Cleansing Tonic, no rinse formula, etc, etc. I had the pale water? micellar water, something like that. Um, I had a Pacifica micellar water cleansing water. I liked it. This one is a little more heavy duty. It's like it, which is interesting because this is for especially stressed skin types. It's for all skin types, especially stressed skin types. But um, this one is harder on my skin. It's, it removes more of the oils than the kale water, which was for oily skin. And maybe part of that was that I was using the sunscreen that was so much more emollient. But yeah, I like Pacifica cleansing, you know, micellar waters. They're... Um, None of them are great for removing eye makeup. Neither of the ones that I've tried, they both sting my eyes. But micellar water is not only great for removing makeup or using as a toner, it is also great for like, if you need a quick pit stop cleanup, I put some, I, you know, I sweat in my job frequently. So if I need to do a quick turnover before going out in the evening. Um, I put a little bit of this on a cotton pad and wipe under my arms and it's great. So, hacks or whatever. Um, yeah, my cellar water, multi-purpose. It is, it's, it's like, it's like soap. It's a great deodorizer and then you can just Throw on an antiperspirant and be good to go. Really not used to lip gloss. The other thing that... So I ordered these two things at the same time. Um, so talking about this next, I used up one of these. I use it as my night moisturizer when I feel like I need some moisture at night or in the morning. I tend to use it more in the morning now. I'll use my hydrating toner at night with my eye cream and then this with my eye cream in the morning. This is the Pacifica Coconut Probiotic Technology Water Rehab Cream. It's a nice moisturizer. I like it. It's also like $16 for 1.7 ounces. So given that I don't use it a lot, like I use probably, probably like a chocolate chip or like maybe like, maybe like a peanut M&M sized amount of moisturizer. So given that that will go all over my face, I don't use this up quickly. It's a nice moisturizer, lasts, you know, so this bottle will last me for like six months in contrast to this bottle, which is 1.7 ounces, but lasted me for six weeks. Um, 
thing that I purchased. I got a mascara. I purchased this on the day that the Icon mascaras were on sale during the 21 Days of Beauty, which was my first purchase during the, any Ulta 21 Days of Beauty sale. I know that I talked about buying something in the spring Ulta 21 Days of Beauty in a video earlier this year. That did not happen. I did not to buy anything during the spring BIB sale. I looked at it on the day and I was like, I know I decided that I was going to buy this, but I don't wanna, so I'm not gonna. So this was my first purchase. It's a nice mascara. It's what I'm wearing. I have been wearing it since my last mascara, which is the Catrice Lashes to Kill, whatever. That mascara, I know it's like $8. That mascara is terrible. It's fine for a month, and then it dries up, and it's like, why did I even bother? You used to be waterproof. You used to be flake resistant. Now you are neither of those things through some alchemy, I don't even know. So anyway, this, this is a waterproof tubing mascara. It's, there are a bunch of claims on the back, which I don't feel like reading, um, but it's a nice mascara. Tubing mascaras come off theoretically with just warm water and you like gently rub your eyelashes and then it comes up. That's not my experience with this. And that's partly because I use a cleansing oil. So I'm pretty much never going to wear mascara without also wearing eyeshadow. So I just put my cleansing oil on my eyes because I'm going, like I can't use my micellar water on my eyes to take off my eye makeup. So I might as well just put my cleansing oil on my eyes and it comes off eventually with the cleansing oil, but it's pretty reluctant. Um, my experience with just using water is that it is significantly worse. So I would say definitely use a cleansing oil to take this off. It's probably a pain in the butt to take off any other way. Um, it smudges horribly if I put it on my lower lash line, on my lower lashes, but it is great on my top lashes if I'm paying enough attention to where it's going. Like it's really easy to just kind of like swoop 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 and end up with like natural feathery looking lashes which are not my thing but um if you are paying attention you can build it up and you know make the like tubing mascaras will build on top of each other on top of themselves relatively well so you can build this up if you're paying attention to where it goes, it's a pretty nice mascara. It'll probably last me for six months because I've been using it for... I bought this in September. I bought this in September. I started using it as soon as it arrived. So this is coming up on two months and the formula has not changed. Which is something that does not happen to my mascaras. I don't know what it is, but I can't keep a tube of mascara for more than a month without the formula going from I like this to I hate this and it does the opposite of everything that I want it to do. And it doesn't matter what mascara, like, 
a super fan was pretty okay for the entire three months, but I didn't love the effect ever. It doesn't build on top of itself volume-wise as much as I would like it to. It's a really lengthening mascara. It's not so great on the volume, which volume is what I prefer. My lashes are pretty long. Um, but yeah, apart from that, every other mascara that I've tried, the Steel Huge, Huge Extreme Mascara, um, Lash Paradise, yeah, like every other mascara that I've tried, it's been okay. For, you know, it's been good for a month, and then the formula has changed and it's been terrible. So, this mascara, this Ico mascara, is unlike any that I've tried so far. Okay, next. I used up a setting spray, which is actually kind of rare. Um, I probably used up another setting spray, but like, I don't do full face that often, so I don't feel the need to set down powders, really. Um, and my makeup tends to last relatively well. So, I mean, I look for that and I pick my products for lasting well. But given that criteria, yes, my, my skin is not problematic and I don't need a setting spray to make my makeup last longer. This is the Wet n Wild Photo Focus Natural Finish. Oh, I was holding up the French side. Natural Finish. Um, this is interesting. I was looking at setting sprays to potentially repurchase it, and I was like, the bottle's so tiny. Sure, it's cheap, but it's $5 for 45 mils. Whereas the setting spray that I ended up getting is $10 for 100 mils. So more than twice the product, less than twice the price. Also, this is the finest mist that I have ever felt. It feels like walking through a mister. Like, honestly, this spray feels like nothing. Like, I, I can spray six sprays of this onto my face and not feel like my face is wet at all. And I can touch it and be like, yeah, there's dampness there. Clearly setting spray landed on my face. But the spray is super soft. Let's see if we can not melt my mascara. But maybe you can see what I mean. It, it, it really pumps like an aerosol. Like seriously, the setting spray, the spray on this setting spray is fantastic. Oh, and that's a nice illumination. I was not wearing highlighter and now it kind of looks like I am. So the flower seal the deal hydrating setting, sp setting spray for a dewy finish. I like this. I've used it like three times and one of those was right now. I have not noticed any difference in the length of wear time on makeup, but I really enjoy the mist on this. And who can argue with the price? Last thing, not beauty related, but I wanted to share because pen stop was in my no buy rules. I acquired uh, through random percolations 
a fountain pen, and some ink to put in a fountain pen. So I got some supplies to clean the fountain pen. I might feel... I don't know how I feel about this. Like, I'm very happy that I have these syringes to fill converters with ink and this syringe for, this bulb syringe for cleaning fountain pen parts. I didn't, these aren't anything that was in my collection before. I didn't have anything like these to replace. So because of that, it's kind of a questionable thing, kind of a questionable purchase. Um, it's not technically forbidden under the rules of my no buy to buy fountain pen cleaning things or pen cleaning things in general. Notebooks and pens? Definitely out. Didn't buy any of those. So I'm counting these as success. I am using them to enjoy something that came serendipitously into my life. And I am. I am enjoying that. Oh, and the last thing um, I did... I know in my update, I was like, I didn't feel like investing the time and the effort into browsing the Julep page and crafting my perfect subscription box. Fair enough. I still, I, I, uh, I changed my mind about it for the months of October and November, which the, the choosing of the boxes happens the month before. So I purchased the November box in October. And it has not arrived yet. Uh, it's expected next week. Um, so I bought um, a few things as as I mentioned, this is within the rules of my no-buy. I am allowed to, I was allowed to um, get the subscription boxes if I felt like there was something that I wanted in the subscription boxes. No add-ons, um, no secret store shopping, but I could buy the boxes themselves. So I did. I bought October. Uh, I got a, a nail treatment, which uh, genuinely appears to help um, strengthen the nails. And I actually got another nail treatment in this box that I have not yet, that has not yet arrived. Um, it's a bad color for my fingernails, which is um, kind of sad, and that's the main reason that I got another one. I got, it's a, it's kind of a lavender tint, and my nail beds are really cool toned, so if I put a lavender tint over my very pale, um, and cool toned nails, they look like I'm headed into hypothermia. It's not great. It's not great. Anyway, so I got a nail treatment, two nail polishes, uh, one of which I've worn and one of which I have not, and some nail decals which I have not played with. That was October's box. For 
uh, November, I got a nail treatment, I think a nail polish, probably a nail polish. There was probably one nail polish that spoke to me. And a clear lip liner because I have one lip color that I love the color and it's super dark and if it travels outside my lip line it's really bad. So um, yeah, the clear lip liner is to wear with that, um, you know, to, to line my lip line and kind of prime my lips and safeguard against those dark dramatic lipsticks traveling outside my lip line. Uh, that is kind of, it's kind of an interesting experience. I hadn't thought about this before, but um, that's kind of illuminating that of the four things that I got in my October box, I've used two of them. And of the three things in my November box, I can't remember one of them of speaks to how invested I am in the actual like in the actual box like I feel like maybe just maybe I am not interested in the box for the things but for the feeling of the new new so I might end up canceling my Julep subscription. We'll see. I do really like the nail polish. So, I mean, they do let you skip whenever you want. So if there's, um, I like the, the formula um, and I find that I'm really lacking in kind of pastel cream colors, like lighter creams, which is to say not sparkles, but uh, creme finishes. So I'll keep my, I'll probably stay subscribed and keep my eyes open for that style of nail polish. The, the creme, lighter end of the spectrum, especially the cool tones. Um, but I might not get, you know, I might sub subject the Julep box to a little more intensive scrutiny in the future because I don't, I don't like this experience of, while well, I, I probably like the things in it, but I don't remember what one of them is. Yeah. All right, so now meditations after my no buy. How do I feel? I feel in control. I am capable of spending what I decide to spend on. Spending on only what I decide to spend on. I, you know, this no buy was never for monetary or financial hardship reasons. It's changed my perspective and my relationship, my perspective on and my relationship with money. I am going to change the brightness because the sun's going down. All right, that might be better. Um, my next observation, I like shopping. I like shopping, but I don't like shopping more than other activities like reading or knitting or even watching YouTube and eating ice cream. 
I don't... I was definitely engaged in shopping to an unhealthy level where I was like, I had a budget so I spent all of the time running up to the start of the month thinking about what I would spend next month's allowance on. That's not healthy. I, I enjoyed the feeling of not having a monthly budget, but just like not buying things that weren't replacements for things. That is pretty much what I'm getting at. And that's a super restrictive feeling to be on. And I would do it again. Maybe not immediately, but I would say firmly, this was a good experience. I feel like I succeeded and I would, I would do this again. I would do exactly this again, where I just took three months off of buying anything that wasn't a direct replacement for something that I was out of. Now, um, another way that it has affected my life, I am more okay with buying small baskets of things and just paying shipping. I, you know, I bought this by itself, and it was on sale for half price and then tax and then shipping, and it was $20. That's completely fine. probably worth $20 to me. It has certainly lasted for longer than the $8 mascara that I could pick up in store. So, it's, I'm, I'm more happy just buying exactly what I want and not spending on random things. You know, I bought some presents and I bought, you know, something that was $20 and there's free shipping for all orders over $50. And I was like, yeah, but I don't need anything from this site. I'll just buy the present. And that will be that. It's, it's a very simple perspective, like, there's nothing evil about paying to defray the cost of getting a package from here to there, or there to here, in the case of a package that's being sh shipped to you. Um, so yeah, I, I am more okay with paying for shipping and not spending to fill my basket up to the free shipping line now. So that's, that's a little thing that it makes you feel more free. You're not like, oh, I can't place this order yet because I'm not at free shipping. No. You're like, ah, oh, I can place this order. And the thought process stops. I'll place this order. The warning pops up in the top of your cart. Are you sure you don't have free shipping yet? 
It's only thirty more dollars for free shipping. You know, it's it's fine. I'll just pay my thirty dollars for this thing that would cost twenty if I bought it in a store, but is not available in a store near me. That seems fair. Uh, last thoughts. Um, I think I'm probably going to buy a blush during the VIB sale. I don't know that I'm going to buy anything else. Um, there are other things that I want. And I also know that the holidays are coming and we'll be exchanging presents with my side of the family at Thanksgiving. And then Hanukkah is two weeks after that. And then Christmas is two more weeks after that. There is plenty of opportunity for me to get anything that I might be wanting. And if I don't get it, and I want it at full price, I can pay full price for it. It's such a freeing thought. I can pay full price for things. I don't have to wait for a sale. I don't have to feel obliged to buy things because they're on sale. I'm feeling a hole for, I have a very summer blush right now. It's very coral and rosy and we're heading into fall winter and I want something deeper, browner, more nude. So I found one that I think will be pretty, that I think will be high quality and it's practical and I want it now. I don't want to wait for someone to buy it for me. So that is the circumstance in which I would buy it for myself. This is filling a hole in my collection that I want. No one is going to buy it for me anytime in the near future. We're not restricted income or anything, but we're kind of um, saving up for a potential uh, large purchase soon. Um, so I don't need to spend a bunch of money on things. Especially when I have you know, especially when I feel when it's so much more rewarding for me to buy things for other people and craft thoughtful presents for them and be like, yes, yes, they will love this. I feel very devious. But it's good devious, I'm pretty sure. I hope you enjoyed or learned something or both. Thanks for watching. Like, comment, subscribe, do whatever you feel like. And goodbye for now.